Welcome to the New Hope Baptist Church Worship Experience with Pastor Leo D. Cyrus Sr. and the New Hope Baptist Church family, where we are reaching the lost, teaching the saved to serve, and giving the world hope in Christ. We do pray that this next hour of praise, worship, and the Word of God will lift you up and guide you through life's spiritual trials. The worship experience begins now.
to praise and glorify you, unify our hearts cry, we magnify in this your holy temple.
have the amazing task of introducing our wonderful speaker for this morning and reading a biography. Sister Ida Green has been an active member of New Hope Baptist Church since 1991. Under the Christian leadership of Reverend Leo D. Cyrus Sr., she is currently the secretary of the adult church school and the instructor, instructor at Children's Church. She is the mother of one son, Derek Turner Sr., and grandmother of four wonderful grandchildren. She is reti retired from the Louisiana Department of Health with over 30 years of dedicated service. Her commitment to Christ, her spiritual dedication to her church and her family and the people around her has enabled her to touch many lives and to be a positive influence to those who cross her path. Her favorite scripture is Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble will hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. one of the ones who did. God has truly been good to me. First, I would like to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Next, I would like to give honor to our beloved pastor, Reverend Leo Daniel Cyrus, a man who saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. Pastor, I would like to thank you for just giving me this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. It's indeed a privilege and an honor. And because I have learned not to take anything for granted. So again, thank you. And I also would like to thank you for giving me more than a week's notice to pass for this assignment. Because y'all, he will call upon you at the last minute. And then to you, Reverend Sam Lofton, I would like to thank you for your prayers and your support. And for pouring into my life each time you stand to teach and preach God's holy word. You are truly a blessing to the body of Christ. And Deacon Branch, I didn't leave you out. Let me tell you what I need you to do. That same energy that you give Pastor Cyrus and Rebel Lofton when they stand in here, you know your favorite three words. Come on now. I want a hymn, okay? And then y'all missing one of my favorite cheerleaders. But I know she's in a better place, y'all, because she's resting in the loving arms of the Lord. She would have been sitting right there on that front pew, smiling, rocking, and cheering me on. I'm talking about no, no other than Miss Dolores Cyrus. The one and only, Miss Dolores Cyrus. Now, my other favorite cheerleader, she took a trip on me. She out there in Atlanta, Georgia, but she better be watching online, Sister Ivory McClain. 
Then y'all have my beautiful daughter-in-law, niece, other friends fellowshipping with me today. Would y'all just wave y'all hands, and I just want to thank y'all for coming out to support me. My son wasn't able to make it, but he's watching online. Now, would y'all help me show some love to these beautiful young ladies? Brandon Gallo and Caitlin Harrison, who've done a great job cheering this year's Women's Day celebration. And my Lord, what can I say about this choir? They have truly ushered in the spirit of the living God in this place. You know, y'all, I was sitting there thinking, I said, Lord, they keep singing like this. All I'm going to have to do is get up and get a benediction. Let the church say amen, go in peace. Now, before I get started, men, would you please help me show some love to all these beautiful ladies all across this sanctuary. Our main scripture for the day, Psalms 133, has already been read, so ushers, you can have your seat. Our theme, ladies, there's room at the table, bridging the gap between all generations. Now, leading up today, all our activities were centered around unity, building stronger relationships with each other. And Sister Nettie Johnson did an awesome job at our sister circle, teaching us on how to be a unity and impact across generations. Yeah. Now, y'all, in the Bible, unity means oneness. God sent his son into the world to unite people to him and to one another. And when God's people are united, powerful things can happen both in the spirit and in the natural because there's, there's strength in unity. And people, we all have a part to play in promoting unity of the church. But I do want you to know Satan's goal is to destroy our unity. And we cannot let that happen. That's why we got to constantly pray for unity. People, we must fight against those things that seek to destroy our unity with God and with one another. You see, when we are unified, the world will see Christ in us. Even Jesus prayed for unity in John 17, 20, and 21. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. People, we are bound as one body for the purpose of furthering God's kingdom and his glory. And this should be our number one goal. So in spite of all our differences in our ages and in our styles and our opinions and in our past failures and in our past mistakes, we as believers should be able to come together as one body and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But first, y'all, we have to have a bond, B-O-N-D, with our brothers and sisters. And we can't have a bond with our brothers and sisters if we don't have a bond with the Lord. People, your relationship with the Lord matters. It should be the most, he should be the most important person in all our lives. You see, the more we focus on him, the greater our unity will be. And y'all, and through his word, we can learn how to love and respect each other. And we can live in peace and harmony with each other. Yes, ladies, for the last couple of weeks, we have fellowship. We done laughed, we cried, we rejoiced, we prayed together. See, y'all, unity was in full effect. But ladies, what are we going to do after this day is over? Men, what have y'all done since me and day to keep y'all bonds together? Well, all the excitement and the love come to the end to next year, people, we got work to do because we must keep all our bonds we made together. Now, with that being said, in preparation for this assignment, I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me a mighty word to help this celebration keep going. And he gave me two words, and that was praise and worship. He said, we need to first work on experiencing unity together when we unite in worshiping him. You see, because worship, unity, and blessings are all tied up together in one. So, Brandon and Caitlin, I went back to Psalms 133. See, y'all, the Jewish people sung Psalms 133 to express their joy coming together for worship at the temple where God had promised to meet them. I'm going to say that again, where God had promised to meet them. See, y'all, they came from all different walks of life, regions, and tribes for one purpose. And that one purpose was to worship God. So my brothers and my sisters, I have decided to take y'all on a little ride this morning so we can all experience Christian unity together. So get ready. Now the ride might get a little rough, but I promise you if you hold on tight, you will not leave here like you came in Jesus' name. And since I have been given permission by Pastor Leo Darrenish, Daniel Cyrus to be the captain of this ship this month. I have decided to give my ship a name. So welcome aboard the Grace and Mercy. And before
before I had this anchor pull, I thought I'd take a little walk around my ship to see exactly what type of passengers I have on board. If that's all right with y'all. Okay. First, I need to know if there's any praise and worshipers on this ship. Okay. See, y'all, I'm looking for folks who woke up with praise and worship on their mind. I'm looking for folks who started, that your praise and worship started when your feet hit the floor this morning. I'm looking for people that praise and worship started while driving here to the house of the Lord this morning. I'm looking for folks who came through the door praising God and don't care about who's watching them. Because you do know we have some spectators on this ship who's, who's saying it don't take all that. But I'm here to tell you, yes it does, it takes that and more when it comes down worse than the one who woke you up this morning. See y'all, this day wasn't promising any of us. We all could have slept away from here last night. But God gave us another chance to get this thing right. So somebody in here need to give God a shout of praise for another chance. And another thing. If y'all knew some of the hell some of us went through when we, this past week, some of the hell we went through just to get here this morning, you will all open your mouth and praise God with us. Also, do I have any passengers on this ship that been through some stuff and have lost some stuff along this life journey? You know, like you lost a job. You done lost the house. You done lost the car. You done lost some friends. Your husband done walked out on you. Your wife done walked out on you. Your children just been acting a plum fool. You been through all that, but one thing you didn't lose was your praise. So let them look at you funny. They don't know your story. They don't know all the things you've been through. So how in the world can they dictate your praise? So tell your neighbor you will never understand my praise. Before this ship set sail. Tell your neighbor this pew is reserved for praise and worshipers only. And they might just want to give you some room. Tell them this not the silent section. We not sitting in the library today. It's for on down Greenwood Springs Road. Tell them God has been too good to me. He deserves all my praise this morning. And I don't know about you. Praising him for great for grace, mercy, and favor this morning. See y'all, because I'm a product of grace. Matter of fact, I'm covered with grace. Do I have any more witnesses in the house that you covered with grace? And so give the God a shout of praise. For his amazing grace. Reverend Lawson, I know you know something about grace, mercy, and favor. Because it was mercy that woke you up this morning. It was grace that started you on your way. And I just want you to know life and favor is upon you. People, God is showing us all favor this morning. See, y'all, all praise and worship got his attention. See, y'all, he's about to pour down his blessings on us in this place. Y'all, I can feel his presence in this place. I come to let you know he's working some things out in your favor. I come to tell you he's about to open some doors that no man can close. We're going to dock soon. 
See, I already knew some of y'all was going to work me hard this morning, so I can't prepare. And y'all, I can't load it. So let me give you a little insight on praise. Praise is not something we do only on Sunday mornings. Praise should be part of our everyday lifestyle. And when a child of God has to be reminded or prompted to praise God, there's definitely something wrong with them. See, that be, there has been many Sundays during praise and worship. Elder Bowman had to prompt us to clap our hands and open our mouths to sing to the Lord. Y'all get so tickled when he comes from around that organ and walk close to the edge of the pulpit with this strange look on his face. See, I already know what's about to go down. Now, if you don't like praise and worship down here, what you plan on doing when you get to hell? Because one of the old hymns of the church says, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that would be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout to victory. Now that sounds like some noise going to be going on in heaven. People, we shouldn't need any prompting to praise God. All of us in here today have a reason to praise and worship God because the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So my brothers and my sisters, if you are breathing, you should be praising the one that gave you breath. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, some of us in here today just need to take a minute and tell the Lord we're sorry. Y'all, we're sorry for coming in here Sunday after Sunday, sitting at his table, feasting on the, his word of forgiveness and feasting on his love and feasting on his grace and mercy. And, and we're not even open our mouth and say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for just letting us see another day. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this day our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me closed in my right mind. Thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have for me. People, we need to stop taking our worship experience for granted. See, because there are so many people wish they were sitting in the house of the Lord today. And y'all, it's amazing to me how folks just refuse to give God praise when it's obvious that it's the Lord that's keeping them. Some of us know we should have been out here a long time ago. Out of here. Out of here. Because we have done some crazy stuff in our lives. But God loved us so. He kept us here to tell the story of his goodness and his mercy towards us. Come on, y'all. We're going to take a quick stroll down memory lane. You know, some of us didn't even know how we made it home after a long night of drinking. We was drunk again, cool to brown. Whoever cool to brown is. But thank God Jesus took the wheel. Some of us been out in a nightclub and fights broke out. But thank God he kept us safe. Some of us been in some terrible situations. We didn't even know how we was going to make it out. But thank God he stepped in just in time and delivered us out. laid our heads on pillars that we had no business laying on. But thank God he showed us mercy. So people, I'm just trying to understand. Help me. How in the world you could come sit in the house of the Lord and not open your mouth? What some of y'all are thinking, oh, she haven't been down my street. I haven't done any of that. But I got one for everybody in here. Matter of fact, I think I ought to just wreck the house with this one. You do know, you and me both could have been exposed for some of our sins we committed. Just the fact God covered them with the blood of Jesus shall make all of us in here want to holler, thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. you to 
can get your walk right with God and your brothers and sisters. And God don't want some of you, he want all of you. So you better praise him while you can. Don't you know you was created for praise? Isaiah 43, 21 states the people who I formed for myself that they may declare my praise. You can look at me strange all you want. I'm determined not to let anybody hinder my praise. Do I have any more witnesses in the house? See y'all, the Lord has made a way for me too many times. Y'all, he done saved me multiple times. Matter of fact, he done stopped me dead in my tracks many a times. Y'all, let me tell you a story. I remember one time I got in trouble for following behind my sister and her boyfriend. Nick in the house. Nick not here. But Nick and, and Jonathan know who I'm talking about when I say this name. His name was David Kamina. Rest his soul. Y'all, I got in trouble because I thought I could handle a drink in Morgan David 2020. Better known as Mad Dog 2020. See, y'all, I drunk that, that stuff. That's the better word for the house of the Lord. Stuff. And I thought I had superpowers. But that's all I'm going to say on that matter. But just know we all almost went to jail. And y'all, my dad told me, he said, you better stop behind, finally behind David because he's crazy as a road lizard. <laughs> and y'all, as I got older, I looked up the meaning of road lizard. <laughs> they say a road lizard is crazy because it lives in the road and it will see cars coming and won't even move out the way. <laughs> so there are there any more road lizards in the house. I'm just playing. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. person that can raise their hand is Monica and she can raise both of them and I know I'm gonna get in trouble after this service. Y'all my poor dad went home not knowing his baby was a road lizard. Now I see some of y'all still not getting the true meaning of praise. Reverend Lofton somebody got it and somebody got it. explain it a little better. See, when we praise God, we are varying Him. We are esteeming Him. Y'all, we estimating His worth. Simply saying, this person is worthy of our honor. Praise is more like thanking Him for what He has done for you and in the lives of the people around you. So just take a look around this church. God is still answering the prayers and working miracles. Matter of fact, you're looking at a miracle, and you just might be sitting by a miracle. People, every time I see Deacon Knight, Deacon Beverly, Deacon Deloach, come through them doors, I say to myself, look at God. There goes a miracle. They are living and walking testimony on what God can do. Can y'all give me some praise, give God some praise for these miracles? People, praise affects you, it affects the devil, and most of all, it affects God. And we got to get this area of our life right. You know, sometimes we just need to break tradition, go off script, when it comes down to praise and worship. Also, if we're going to bridge the gap with, these, with this generation, they need to be able to come in here and freely worship God in their own way. And not worry about what folks going to say. We need to let them sing. We need to let them shout. We need to let them dance. See, because I'd rather for them to dance in the house of the Lord than to go out there dancing for somebody in the streets. If we don't change some of our traditions, we're going to lose them, y'all. Back in May at the Great Louisiana Youth Explosion, the youth just blew my mind during praise and worship here. I kept thinking, I said, Lord, if these kids can worship God like this, what about the adults? Because the Lord moved in that place. People, we should, be thanking, we should be thanking God every day for the youth and young adults we have here in New Hope. God is doing some amazing things in their life, and we all can learn a lot from them. You know, we have folks right now in here can't freely worship God because their minds all over the place. They came in here with the weight of the world on their shoulders. 
But I want you to know you got on the right ship today where you can leave all your worries behind. So whatever you're going through, I want you to know praise will help you through it. You need to use your weapon to praise. And if you really want to see someone that loves to praise and worship God, look in the back of the Brenda George. People, God, we must make a decision to praise God in all situations. And God is how we feel. And I believe somebody in here right now is waiting on God to move in their life today. And I want you to know he will move heaven and earth for you at the right time and in the right way. You just hang on in there. Don't you give up on God because he didn't give up on you. Y'all, he's able. You just keep praising him. And let me throw this in. Just in case y'all didn't know, Satan can't stand it when we start praising God. And he's big mad right now. Because there's too much praise going on on this ship. See, y'all, praise is a bitter reminder of what he lost. You see, Satan was Lucifer in heaven, and his job was to lead worship and present it to the great I Am. You know the story of Lucifer. He got kicked out of heaven. Lucifer was not satisfied with worshiping God. He wanted to be worshipped. People of God, Satan cannot stand around in a church where everybody praising and shouting and thanking God. And Satan cannot live in a home where you praise and shouting and thanking God. And Satan cannot sit in a life or a heart where people are praising and shouting and thanking God. See y'all, because through praise to God, Satan is defeated and God is lifted up. Brothers and sisters, let me give you another reason why I praise him like I do. See, y'all see my glory. Y'all don't see my story. God has truly turned my life around. When I think about all the people and places God has spared me from, y'all, I can't help but praise him. See, y'all, he took this little girl from South Baton Rouge and cleaned her up to be used for his glory. You know, just standing here behind this sacred desk proclaiming the word of God just blows my mind. Y'all, this road wasn't easy, but thank God I had two sisters praying for me. See, y'all, my oldest sister, she was a reverend. And her baby sister at one time was a rebel, R-E-B-E-L. And y'all, I'm so glad both of them got to see a change in me before they went home to be with the Lord. See, y'all, because I'm standing on their prayers today. And I thank God I don't look like what I've been, what I've been through. Do I have any more witnesses on this ship? You don't look like what you've been through. If so, give God a shout of praise for turning your life around. Y'all, Fantasia sing a song titled Necessary. If y'all have never listened to it, I encourage you to go listen to it. The song doesn't have many lyrics. But they are so powerful. It goes like this. It says, I am who I am today because God used my mistakes. He worked them for my good like no one else ever could. And at the end, she said it was necessary. So I just want to encourage someone today with these words. Everything you went through, everything you going through, y'all, it's necessary. So hang on. Now, brothers and sisters, I need you to hold tight because we're about to lunch out into some deep waters. And before we lunch out, I just want to share this one thing, what I learned this past couple weeks, and that is this generation needs us. This generation needs us. People, it's time for us to start lifting one another up, one another up in prayer. It's time for us to start condemning one another, especially our younger generation. It's time for us to stop looking down our noses at other people, thinking we better than them. Matter of fact, who deputized you? Who gave you a badge to go around pointing out where people are wrong and how they sin? Because my Bible says we all have sinned and fell short of the glory. You know, it's, it's amazing to me how some folks who like to think they always been saved. Their life always been a bed of roses. They have always walked the straight and narrow. And if truth be told, all of us in here got a story. And y'all, we need to share our story. 
and we need to share our story with this generation. See, y'all, we need to be real about our past experiences and struggles. See, our testimonies just might help this generation. See, they need to witness the power of God through our stories. See, these young ladies need to know we messed up too. But thank God that wasn't the end of our story. And y'all, I'm not finished. We about to go even deeper. Because I can't close without touching on the first part of our theme, ladies, there's room at the table. So the Lord told me to ask you who you're inviting to your table. Are you inviting this generation to your table? Or do you have a select group of people you invite to your table? You know the ones I'm talking about. The ones that look like you, dress like you, talk like you. You have the same economic status as you, same social status as you, drive the same car as you, and live in the same zip code as you. Then he told me to ask you what you're serving at your table. Besides mess, are you serving some people some bread of life? Something that's going to help them along the journey. I'm just here to warn you, you better be careful about who you're inviting to your table and what you're dishing up at your table. And don't be surprised that Jesus come and flip your table over. remember you didn't deserve the feast at God's table you didn't deserve the feast on God's grace and goodness but he invited you to his table see y'all Jesus invited the outcasts he invited the sinners he invited the friends he invited enemies to his table enemies to his table and we should do the same y'all it's time for us to extend that same grace God gave to us to this generation and especially these young ladies these young ladies, y'all, they're dealing with a lot of issues. And y'all, many are at their breaking point. And y'all, some of them fighting them solemn battles. And y'all, they fighting them hard. They fighting depression, mental health, peer pressure, sexual activity, low self-esteem. That's just to name a few. And do y'all know a lot of young folks dealing with identity crisis? So y'all, we need to start lifting these, these, these young folks up. And they also carrying some heavy weight of guilt and shame. Guilt and shame. And y'all, it's weighing them down. People... We need to invite these young ladies to our table. And also, y'all, we need to start inviting our kids to the table. See, because y'all, I remember several months ago, I was sitting at the table with my son, and he started talking about some things he had done while growing up. And I'm looking at him, and I'm saying, well, who is this? <laughs> I know you didn't, some of the things he was saying. I'm saying, this can't be true. And at one point, I told him I didn't even want him no more. But all I can say is, y'all, God is good. He's a prayer answering God. So people, don't you give up on your children. You keep fighting for them. You keep going to war for your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews. You keep bleeding the blood because the blood still works. Come on and have a seat at my table. I want to encourage you with these words. I want you to know God is not through blessing you. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to know when you fall, because you will fall, you can get back up again. I want you to know there's nothing you have ever done that has made God love you any less. I want you to know that your past will not determine your future. Because God can still use you for his glory. Because where there's life, y'all, there's hope. Ladies, you have a purpose in life. But in order for you to walk in it, you got to leave your past behind. And I want you to remember, no one has the power to define you but the one who created you. Ladies, you got to know your worth. Ladies, you got to know your worth. And 1 Peter 2 and 9 say you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Ladies, you will win. You will have the victory. Repeat this after me. Victory today is mine. Ladies, ladies when you depart from this ship today, you will be baggage free in Jesus' name. Because this is your exodus. 
Will you help me praise God for this generation? Will you help me keep this generation covered in prayer? Because y'all, the devil is busy. Trying his best to destroy this generation. Y'all, I'm praying that this generation become a mighty force for the Lord. Ladies, there's no way I can let you get up from this table while telling you about a man I know from Galilee. Lady, this man is a miracle worker. This man turned water into wine. This man took two fish and five loaves of bread and fed a multitude. Y'all, this man walked on the water. This man rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. Y'all, this man healed a woman with an issue of blood for 12 long years. Y'all, this man raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. Do anybody else in this house know this man? And ladies, this man went to Calvary. And ladies, they hung him high, y'all. They stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for me, he died. But how many of y'all know that's not how the story ends? Three days later, y'all, he rose again. Now, y'all, that's love. And this is why this man ain't Jesus deserve all our praise, all our glory, and all our honor. And this is why we all should bow down and worship him. Y'all, I'm trying to get this ship back to the dock. But Pastor, that's a storm out in the ocean. And it's moving this away. And if your soul ain't anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. People, there's another ship is about to leave the shore. And if you have a part your ticket, you still have time. Yeah. This ship I'm talking about is the old ship of Zion. Yeah. Y'all, this ship has landed many a thousand. I need you to come on and get on board. Y'all, do y'all want to know what, who the night, who the captain of this ship? Yeah. King Jesus is the captain. Y'all, come on and get on board. Get on board. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling present you falsely before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both for now and forever let the church say amen go in peace For watching New Hope Baptist Church, located at 5856 Greenwell Springs Road in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where Reverend Dr. Leo D. Cyrus Sr. is pastor. We pray this worship experience was a blessing to you, and we look forward to seeing you next week.